General Michael Hayden, the former director of the CIA, had an interesting observation uh, that he shared with the world on Twitter. Wanted to put this up on screen. So he's uh, reacting to a, a journalist who tweeted, I've covered extremism and violent ideologies around the world over my career, have never come across a political force more nihilistic, dangerous, and contemptible than today's Republicans. Nothing close. And then Hayden, uh, the former CIA director, retweeted it with, I agree, and I was the CIA director. Um, that's a really, really irresponsible and disturbing thing to say that, like, the today's, in my view, today's Republicans are more extreme and dangerous than ISIS or Al Qaeda mm. or, uh, you know, a actual, like, terrorist organizations or the people he's supposedly keeping us safe from. And will make people think, oh, if that's your ideology, that Republicans, that domestic Republicans mm -hmm. are the true threat. Well, then who, who is the deep state spying on? Who, who is the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security? Where are they placing their resources? If you're saying that, in your view, the major threat that we face is from, is from the half the country that votes for Donald Trump, um, is, is that who you're looking at? Is that who you're surveilling rather than, um, again, ISIS, et cetera? Yeah, well, the question about who these people are surveilling and whether or not they've ever been surveilling the right people <laughs> is a big right. one. But uh, something that leftists often say is that the real issue that liberals and never Trump Republicans had with Trump had nothing to do with the substance and everything to do with a kind of unpredictability, lack of control, lack of good optics, the messiness of it all, the idea that he didn't follow procedure, he didn't follow the rules, he didn't follow decorum. Um, and it does feel like this response from people who were insiders as part of, I would argue, a very destructive uh, agency in the mm -hmm. CIA, the idea that they would object to Trump or to object to Trumpism and the way it's manifested over the past few years as inherently dangerous and uniquely dangerous in the context of the world does speak to, I think, some establishment orientation that is really unsettled by the idea of Donald Trump and that erratic behavior, that unpredictable politics. And is, frankly, in my view, overplaying the threat of political violence domestically or the, the scope of it. Is there some domestic political violence perpetrated by very fringe right-wing people? Yes. It's not a lot. It's not a large category of violence. Most violence in the country is, is committed totally apolitically or non-ideologically by neighbors who are angry at each other, or dom it's domestic abuse, or it's workplace violence, or it's crime, or something else. Very small category. It is true, if you look at the numbers over the years, there has been a, a rise or a, a proportion rise in how much of that very minor category of violence is, is, can be credibly attributed to the right wing. That category looks large. If you only start counting after, like from September 12, 2001 and on, uh, it's still, still dwarfed by 9-11 if you start counting a day before that. Um, so fine, fair enough. Maybe it's appropriate to put some law enforcement resources um, uh, to that. But to characterize that as, as the main threat, as the most nihilistic force you have ever encountered is just, is, is so indicative of very misplaced priority. That's like, that's TDS brain. There is an argument, I think, that the way that we have characterized terrorists, uh, however, you know, I say that, I only hesitate because obviously within their own context, the point I'm trying to make is that in their own context, people all over the world obviously see themselves differently than we mm -hmm. describe them in the United States. Mm -hmm. And that there is this interesting perspective where America is dealing with a level of political turmoil right now that we think of as other people's problems, quote unquote, third world problems. Those are the kind of terms that we're throwing around a lot when we're talking about this raid and it's a banana republic, right? But it is a, perhaps an eye-opening moment that you know, one, one person's terrorist group is another person's freedom fighter in every context, in every war, in yeah, every sure. conflict and skirmish that has ever happened in history is just written by the victors. And in the case of the Civil War and the War of Northern Aggression types, sometimes it continues to be written by the losers. But but the reality is that we are now in this in this weird context where we are having new definite. We're we're we're, ca we're characterizing what's going on in our country the same way that we've often characterized what goes on in other countries. And I can see an argument that's not necessarily a bad thing, even if there is a certain alarmist, exaggerated um, uh, aspect to it that's not necessarily constructive. But you know. It is interesting to see that this kind of um, the the establishment stakeholders are still reacting in this way. This like Liz Cheney camp, perhaps a little bit bigger than we anticipated. Mm, absolutely. Well, we also wanted to play uh, this clip from uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, describing the situation as she sees it. 
Uh, well, when you look at permanent Washington, we see very prominently placed as the national security state and the mainstream media. It's hard not to be skeptical when you look at the, their tactics and their timing to really question what their motives are to leverage their power and their influence to have an impact on these midterm elections that voters will be going to vote at in just a few weeks and to do what they have already stated publicly is their objective, which is to prevent Donald Trump from running for president in 2024. This is not something new. We only have to go back in the recent past to, to remember that these are the very same people who deceived the American people for years trying to get us to believe that Donald Trump was an agent of Russia and that he stole the 2016 election. These are the same people going after parents and patriots, targeting them as extremists, as people who are quote unquote enemies of the state, dissenters, opponents. These are the very same people who want to censor us and control what information we can see and hear and say through their so-called mm -hmm. ministry of truth, which by the way, hasn't gone away. It's still there. It's just there by a different name. So the American people, I think, are seeing that, hey, this is not a one-off situation. It's just a serious escalation of this dangerous trend we've seen of the politicization of public institutions that exist to serve the public right. good, but are instead being leveraged for power and political gain by those in power. Those who exist in what is often called the deep state, the permanent Washington, as you refer to it, they are people who believe that, that we, the people, exist to serve them rather than them existing to serve the people. And so they will go stop at nothing in order to protect their power. That is that permanent Washington. And dangerously, they've got the national security state as their enforcement arm to do so. And that looked a little odd on screen because that was a clip from Twitter, and that's the only way we could show it. We had our between those, uh, <laughs> those two pillars. Um, look, I, I substantively agree with uh, what she was saying there, you know, when you're smearing all Republicans as violent extremists, as the former CIA director was doing, you are including people who, right, were protesting at their school board because they didn't like its mask or curriculum policies. You're, you know, all, all those kinds of people, which you, you, end, you get to a place where you're, you're claiming that half the country holds views that are violent and extremists. And then... And then you really like what? What do you? Where do you even go from there? Then it's then you're in. I guess if you believe what you're saying, then you're already in like Nazi Germany or something. It's too late to salvage this country. Yeah. So I have long been an advocate of being careful about language that is critical of, let's say, a Republican, you know, or a conservative official, elected official, or a pundit, someone who's high profile and the voters as a whole. In fact, at one point in 2018-ish, Bernie Sanders was asked whether or not Donald Trump supporters were racist, and he declined to say so, and people really came down on him hard. He said, look, I'm happy to point to specific things that Trump has said that I believe are racist, and I think it's fine to criticize Donald Trump as racist. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton was like, call on me, call on me. <laughs> right, but he, he, took a, he took a lot of fun. Yeah. And I wrote an article at The Intercept defending his choice because I think, one, just empirically, it's very difficult to accurately make a claim about such a large group of people. But also, if you want to have any kind of sense of trust, a public trust and goodwill between people, you, you, you got to start somewhere that's not jumping to quite those that level of conclusion. And that's not what individ individuals can say what they want to say. But if you are a communicator, if you're a politician, if you're in the public eye, I do think you have a different role to play. So I do think that some of the language that's been used by Democrats to discuss Republicans in the conservative movement and Trumpism has been harmful. At the same time, yes, sometimes it's parents protesting mask mandates, which I wouldn't describe as fascist or extremist or anything like that. But I do think that it is obviously true that there is a more extreme movement that has exploited all of these legitimate public concerns, people who are just legitimately concerned about their kids and all of these things, to really gin up a, a pogrom of sorts against marginalized communities. The, the number of words that are taken up in our public space talking about trans kids, when most people don't have a trans kid, and this overinvestment and what happens in their, their transition process from parents who I don't think have a sincere interest in that, but understand that it's polarizing in this way that is a pipeline toward a whole host of political and economic beliefs that frankly don't inure to the benefit of the average person. I do think that's a real problem. I don't know how to describe it, and I don't quite know how to disentangle it from people who I think are motivated by sincere anxieties. But I am a little concerned, not just that the language among liberals has been so inflammatory, but some of the ways that even people like Tulsi are using language 
it, it does it does make people I think get in a posture that the world is it's very dire it's very extreme and I do worry that it doesn't do the work of bringing us together as a mm -hmm. community as much as making the boogeyman seem so vicious and so threatening um, that it will drive people to make again political decisions and personal decisions that aren't necessarily rational or productive. I, I do wish that um, uh, conservative pundits would turn down the rhetoric, the rhetoric a little bit on some of this stuff. Like you talk about, you know, don't write checks you can't cash, don't like over diagnose or don't uh, over use language that then can't fit what you're saying, right? It, 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 if, it's, if it starts with, you know, some of these curriculums, for instance, are using some kind of more out there, fringier academic kind of ideas that aren't really appropriate for young people, sure, most people agree with that. Then it, but then suddenly morphs into, and the Democrats are all pedophiles the trying to take exactly. their They're children, groomers. right? It's, ah. and that, it's so, <laughs> right? That that's not true, and that's and, and that it, it makes people can tune you out because you yeah. sound like a crazy person. Because what you're saying is crazy and not accurate. Yeah. So yeah. let's turn down that that kind of stuff. Tur a little turn bit. down the heat. Turn it. Turn it down. Turn that it, dial it, down. It, the bills are expensive anyway. <laughs> <laughs> More rising right after this.